Rabbi Kesterman, a Holocaust survivor and prominent leader in the Hasidic Jewish community, was uh, greatly pained by the destruction of cemeteries throughout post-war Eastern Europe. As an individual, he was responsible for the restoration of cemeteries, yet felt there should be an official U.S. government entity to represent the heritage sites, to, uh, including churches, synagogues, and cemeteries of millions of Americans uh, in, from Eastern Europe. So this heritage was in danger of being further neglected and ultimately destroyed. I'll read one more paragraph of this statement. In 1979, due to his diligent advocacy efforts and visionary leadership, U.S. Representatives Fred Richmond introduced a bill to create a commission to help preserve the cemeteries and monuments associated with Jewish heritage and the heritage of other immigrants in the United States recognizing that as a nation of immigrants, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Send these the homeless tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp, meaning we lift our lamp beside the golden door. Jewish heritage and the heritage of other immigrants in the United States who came as a result of that lamp. And I might say one of the tragic periods in American history uh, was in the 1930s when we closed that door to people seeking refuge and safety and security. And one of the things that all of us must be gathered together to commit ourselves to that immigrants from whatever land, of whatever religion, whatever culture, understand that that lamp still is lifted to give sanctuary. We're having a lot of debate about that in this country today. Years later, Rabbi Kastenbaum approached U.S. Representative Steve Solars about the possibility of reintroducing the bill. And in February of 1985, Steve Solars, with whom I served, reintroduced the bill and approached U.S. Senator Edward Kennedy, who introduced the bill in the Senate. The commission was finally established through Public Law 9983, which President Reagan signed into law in August of 1985. This commission is a critical recognition of and extension of the values that are America. Thank all of you for your leadership, your commitment, your support of time and talent, and yes, perhaps money, to this effort, which is an effort, yes, where we invest some overseas, but it's an investment in America, in its values, in its future. It is a commitment to those who would destroy the relics the cemeteries, the synagogues, the churches of the past will have in America an effective opponent who will not allow our past to be forgotten. God bless you and thank you. Uh, this is a plaque, as all of you can see, uh, which at the top says, in God, we trust. John Fitzgerald Kennedy in his inaugural address said, let us go forth to lead the land that we love, asking his blessing and his help, but knowing that here on earth, God's work must truly be our own. In God we trust, and God needs to trust that we will do his work here on earth. Louis Kestenbaum, honoring your contribution to preserving America's heritage abroad. 30th anniversary tribute, United States Commission for the Preservation of America's Heritage Abroad, United States Congress, Washington, D.C., June 18, 2015.
I am honored on behalf of so many to present this to you Thank and you. in great appreciation for your father and your work. Thank you so to much. Uh, uh, it's a special privilege to introduce our tribute chair now, Louis Kestenbaum, a businessman, a philanthropist, community leader. His achievements cover a broad and diverse range of activities. As founder and chairman of Fortis Property Group, he presides over a portfolio of assets valued at approximately $3 billion. As a community leader, Mr. Kestenbaum is committed to continuing and expanding the legacy of his great late father, Rabbi Zvi Kestenbaum. In this capacity, he serves as chair of the ODA Primary Healthcare Network in Williamsburg, a full service, federally qualified health center founded by Rabbi Kestenbaum in 1974 that has accommodated over 175,000 patient visits in 2014 alone from seven locations in Brooklyn and upstate New York. His philanthropic work has included the construction of an entire community for low-income families in Jerusalem. And following the example of his father, Louis Kestenbaum has led a ceaseless effort to restore and preserve Jewish cemeteries in Eastern Europe. Among his recent achievements has been the restoration and preservation of the Jewish cemetery in Slubich, Poland, and the restoration of over 200 graves in Ukraine, a project which is ongoing. At the same time, he's currently pursuing the restoration of a Jewish cemetery in the Czech Republic, and we'll hear from the Czech ambassador shortly. I want a personal word about him and his great country. Both of these projects are slated for completion in 2016. So your work has really had a tremendous impact and it continues both here and abroad. And we're privileged to be with you and we're again thankful that you've remembered your father in such a meaningful way. Thank you, Ambassador Eisenstadt, ladies and gentlemen, honorable members of con Congress and distinguished guests. It's an honor and a pleasure to be with you today. Please let, let me take this opportunity, first of all, to thank Commission Chair Leslie Weiss for making this event possible. We are here together because we all share in the vision first promoted by my father, Rabbi Zvi Kestenbaum, of blessed memory. My father was a remarkable man. He was intense, passionate, and highly principled. He was born on April 11, 1922, in a small town in Hungary during the war he and his family was, were taken by the Nazis and held in several concentration camps, including Bergen-Belsen in Germany and Trevenstadt in Czechoslovakia. With God's help, he survived. He returned home after the war to a tragedy. His entire extended family, his parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins, his two brothers and six sisters, all had been murdered. He was the only surviving member of his family. It's impossible to understand how my father must have felt when faced with this inconceivable loss. But my father did not give up. Left alone, he asked himself, why did I survive? What purpose was my life meant to serve? He felt that God must have kept him alive to accomplish important and meaningful things. At that moment, he knew that he had been given a mission, 
to help everyone in need in any way possible. This certainty became his purpose in life, and he stayed on that path firmly until the day he left us. As a community leader in Villiers-Nambouk, Brooklyn, my father quickly earned a reputation as someone who opened his home and his heart to anyone who asked for help. He was personally moved by any kind of injustice and misfortune. He knew there was nothing he could do to bring back the millions of lives that had been lost during the war. But their legacy, the cemeteries and holy places that had been destroyed, this could be recovered, restored, and preserved. He felt that it was his moral duty as a Jew to see that this was done. It is impossible to overstate the difficulty and the complexity of this mission. When my father first returned to Hungary, 1976, the Cold War was raging. Travel was hard. Facilities outside of major cities were almost not existent, especially for Orthodox Jews. Despite this challenge, my father immediately set about restoring the cemetery in his native town, Urferto. My father did not understand the meaning of the word no. He pushed and flattered and convinced local officials to cooperate. He built relationships with the police to make sure that the graves would be watched. Today, the cemetery has been fully restored and protected. This was just the beginning. Over the following years, my father led the drive to restore over 50 cemeteries in Hungary Poland, Romania, Russia, Czechoslovakia, even as far as Egypt. With my father's support and guidance, the Heritage Foundation for Preservation of Jewish Cemetery was founded. Working with the foundation, 220 cemeteries today have been fully restored. As my father's effort continued and grew, he very quickly realized that the U.S. government needed to be involved, voicing its concern directly to governments overseas regarding the treatment and preservation of holy sites. With this in mind, the idea for the Commission for the Preservation of America's Heritage Abroad was born. With his usual energy and focus, my father enlisted the help of sympathetic, sympathetic member of Congress, the late Senator Edward Kennedy, and especially the late Representative Stephen Solers. <laughs> the establishment of the Commission in 1985 and my father's service on the four presidents was without question one of his proudest accomplishments. My father's vision has inspired not just me, but also my brother Moshe and my son Joe. <laughs> Both of whom work my, by my side. My wife, my sister, and my daughters are also with us today. We all take great pride following in my father's footsteps. At this moment, we are involved in several projects. Among them is the restoration and preservation of one of the largest 
Ukrainian Jewish cemeteries located in Ostro. Another major project will restore the Jewish cemetery in Prostyov, Czech Republic. In connection with the Prostyov project, I want to thank Ambassador Peter Gandolovich of the Czech Republic very sincerely for joining us today. In 2001, my father was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Over the next 12 years, until he passed away peacefully, on June 5, 2013, he never stopped moving forward. He followed the path he first saw in 1945, when he stood alone. Surrounding by the destruction of war, and the sorrow of his own personal loss. For all that he suffered, my father was never a victim. He was a survivor, a fighter, and above all, a visionary. There was always more to do and never enough time to do it. He understood that however hard he worked, he could not succeed alone. And so, he built organizations, networks, and coalitions. The fact that we are all gathered here today stands as the greatest tribute to his memory that I can imagine. And on behalf of my father, I thank you all from the bottom of my heart. May his memory be blessed. Well, um, I've had two great honors in life, one to be chairman of this commission, the other to be Rabbi Kestenbaum Shabbos Goy. <laughs> and let me tell you, that was a hard job. Rabbi Kestenbaum could yell at me in five different languages. You know, um, we're in the, uh, this wonderful room named after Senator Ted Kennedy, who we've mentioned many times today. And it's appropriately on loan to the Kestenbaum family and the memory of all the good works he and all of you have done to preserve and protect Jewish cemeteries in Eastern and Central Europe. But I, I need to tell you a story about the legislation which Ambassador Eisenstadt has mentioned on a few occasions this afternoon. It wasn't so easy to get done. It's hard enough to deal with the communist rulers in Hungary, but it's not so easy to deal with the United States Senate either. Now, we passed this very easily on the House side because, after all, Steve Solas represented Borough Park in Williamsburg. We needed your votes, and we thank you for them. But, but getting a sponsor in the Senate proved difficult. Thanks to another rabbi, Morris Scherer, and a third rabbi, Haskell Besser, we were able to get the attention of Senator Kennedy, who was already a revered figure in American politics. And I remember, as if it were this morning, Solars and Rabbi Kestenbaum and I walking over from the House side to this very building to meet with Senator Kennedy to convince him. And I remember Solars telling Rabbi Kestenbaum, don't speak, Rabbi, I'll take care of this. Not an easy thing for Rabbi Kestenbaum to do, but he sat there. And Solas went through all of the reasons that we should have a commission and that's why Senator Kennedy should be the lead sponsor. I guess I could say Kennedy was interested, but not convinced. So as we got up to leave, the Kennedy office was a museum to the Kennedy family, photographs and pictures and all sorts of artifacts from this great political dynasty. And Rabbi Kestenbaum said, Senator, May I say something? So the blood starts draining from me. He says, you know, just yesterday I visited Arlington Cemetery and saw the magnificent graves to your brothers, who are great American heroes and deserve the honor. Don't all God's children deserve the same honor? In a flash, Senator Kennedy understood what this was all about. Rabbi Kestenbaum was a great man, a great communicator, and in my life, the finest person I've ever met. So thank you, Lewis, for letting me part of this program. <laughs>